if you talk to any audio enthusiast or a pro audio builder, they will tell you the quickest and easiest way to upgrade your sound system is by adding a subwoofer. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Um, I am not gonna get into all of the details about the things I like and don't like about this Razer. If that's something that you're interested, I do talk about the sound system in this in another video. Check that out. I think you might appreciate some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about in there. Uh, we talk about the different types of, sub, not subwoofers, but the mid-range and tweeters and the amp size that came with the unit. So from left to right, one of the first things that we have is the subwoofer box. Um, as stated before, I'm a huge SCAR audio fan. Uh, we have done the, a subwoofer installation on another Razer that I owned in the past. Uh, yet yeah, there are also videos on that one, but we're gonna install a 12 inch subwoofer. This has the Linex coating shell on it. Um, it withstands up to the weather really, really well. Um, and it is a ported box. Right here, we have our secondary or auxiliary battery. Um, this is an AGM type battery. It is 12 volt and it's also 35 amp hours, which is gonna become really important in the future. And I'll explain that a little bit more when we hit the board and talk about schematicing. Over to my left, we have the primary battery that came with the unit. This is a Polaris brand, uh, uh, acid lead acid battery it is a 46 amp hour battery um, so together when we com the co we combine the 40, uh, 46 and the 35 we're going to get almost 80 amp hours of battery life which is we're stepping into six volt battery range dual battery setups and campers and things of that nature golf carts so we're going to have a lot of power to push these amplifiers um, over here is the actual subwoofer itself. It is a dual 4 ohm subwoofer. We are going to wire this up to be a 2 ohm subwoofer package. And then finally, our monoblock amplifier in addition to our wiring kit. Now, unpackaging this subwoofer, you're going to see that this thing is absolutely massive. Um, what we've got here is a 800 RMS 12 inch subwoofer that has a sensitivity rating of about 86.5 decibels and it has a responsive all the, a response rate of all the way down to 22 hertz. So this thing is going to provide some really good audio. It's gonna um, push the bass right through us while we're sitting in this Razer. However, the one thing I also wanna help you understand is we're not creating this sound system because we want it to be exceptionally loud. What we're really looking for is good clean bass that goes through all the octaves at a really good range of levels but not the highest levels and what i mean by that is we're not going to be blasting this thing all over the place while we're out riding what i'm really looking for is good solid sound system that sounds great at very minimal levels so that way we can enjoy our riding okay you all are going to have to really work with me out here if you think i'm kind of nasty and sweaty. It is exceptionally hot out here. We live in Illinois and the humidity out here is disgusting. I hate the state. <laughs> so um, two real important aspects to consider when you're talking about amplifiers and purchasing them. Okay, first and foremost, it's gotta be a marine grade. Um, the one thing that I love about SCAR Audio is they have uh, a few different types of marine grade uh, amplifiers. This is the only monoblock they have and it's an 800 watt RMS which stands for root mean square, um, which is just a fancy term used to uh, explain how to measure power. Um, in addition to that, the amplifier that you buy needs to be at least as much RMS rated as the subwoofer. So this subwoofer is also rated at an RMS of 800. Now in a perfect world, I would probably have gotten about a 1200 watt RMS amplifier, they didn't have one, but in this case, it's gonna match up just perfectly. The one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna buy a speaker that has a higher level of RMS rating than your amplifier does. You always want more power than you do speaker. Now I mentioned before that we were gonna go with wet sounds cabling. This is the cable, I bought this from crutchfield.com. They are a very well-known audio and, well, 
video and audio uh, website. This thing cost me approximately 30 bucks. Um, so what this is gonna do is gonna plug right into the back of my head unit and it's gonna provide me the left and right RCA cables in addition to the remote signal cable. So this cable, the remote sends a message to my amplifier and tells it whether, it, whether or not it should be on or off. Um, so that's really good. I also have all of my cabling. Like I said before, just get yourself a nice cable system. They come very inexpensive. This one cost me about $25. And this is a four gauge battery wiring cabling system um, in addition to the negative. So there's a positive cable and the negative cable and the RCA cables. Finally, with this system, we also have the uh, fuse. So this is a 100 amp fuse. Um, it's a really pretty looking one. I mean, it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't need to look like this, um, but we are definitely gonna use it. And this is gonna go between the amplifier and the battery itself. So without further ado, the first thing that we really need to look at when it comes time to actually installing this stuff in your unit is where you're gonna put it. Um, so m you've got to make sure that these amplifiers get a lot of air. So airflow with amplification is dire. Um, if your amplifier doesn't have the amount of breathing room, it can easily overheat and even catch fire. So the last thing you want is anything like that to happen in your unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put ours underneath the driver's seat that takes care of making sure it's covered in case it starts to rain or we go through some big mud holes or whatever. But it's also got a lot of breathing room and air that will be circulating around it. So let's just go ahead and start to do some measurements. We'll set up the camera so that way you can kind of track how we're doing it. We are gonna install this with some aluminum. Um, we got some L-shaped aluminum that we're going to use to cut and create bracing so that way we can screw the amplifier onto that aluminum and then bolt that aluminum to the undercarriage of the seat. All right, so now as we move on over to our schematic, um, I'm gonna explain what you, there's really two ways we can do this and, and there's two ways we can install this amplifier. So looking back at our amplifier, you will be able to see that you're gonna have two inputs here. You're gonna have a left and a right RCA input. And these inputs need to come into the amplifier from your head, head unit or otherwise known as your receiver. So in order to get those inputs, you're gonna do one of two things. First, if you do not have a supplied cable or an aftermarket third party cable, you're gonna have to splice into the RCA or otherwise known as the left and right auxiliary cables in order for you to add the um, amplifier to your system. Now this is one strand, so this could be considered your left audio input or your right audio input signal cable. Um, and what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to remove whatever uh, end may be on there as far as a connector, and you're gonna have to splice into two cables of one cable that's why this says times two so what we're really looking at here is we're looking at one of these okay so this up here represents one of these rca cables now if you are to split that cable you will see that there's two um, smaller cables within so you're gonna to have to splice into four different cables in order for you to, to make this happen. And then you're gonna to have to put all that back together however you see fit. Now, that's only if you cannot find a third party install cable, which is what you'll use here. So in the back of your head unit or receiver, you will have the option to install the third party cable that'll give you the inputs in order for you to connect this RCA cable into the head unit and then the other end right in here to your amplifier. The second thing we need to consider is our batteries and expanding those batteries in order to meet the demand of our amplifier. So every amplifier is going to need a positive and a negative uh, input in order for it to work clearly, the power. This right here is the remote. 
Now I was talking about that earlier. This tells the amplifier when it needs to turn on and when it needs to turn off. Now this remote is gonna come from our head unit and it's gonna be a third wire in order for you to make this connection happen. So over here to our schematic again, what we have is we have a uh, parallel dual battery setup schematic here in order to help you better understand um, how you can expand the amp hours of your system in order to um, allow your stereo to stay on longer when you're using the accessory in order for you to hear your jams. So um, you can do this one of two ways. You can hook your amplifier up to the main battery at 12 volts without using an auxiliary battery or you can use the auxiliary battery as well. It works the same way no matter what. Now ideally you're going to want to use two of the same exact batteries uh, with the same exact amp hours if you can. That's going to be extremely difficult for us because we don't have the same size batteries but we also don't have the same size compartments in the razor in order for that to, to work. However, what we're gonna do here is we're going to set up a parallel battery system, which will actually increase the amp hours of this main battery. Because this main battery has 46 amp hours, our auxiliary battery has 35. So if you just add those two together, it's just gonna drastically increase, almost double the type, the battery capacity that we have, allowing us to uh, rock out a little bit longer. So now that we have a really good idea of what it is that we're gonna need in order to make these connections, let's do a dry run of all of our equipment and cabling to make sure everything works before we go ahead and start the install. Here's a quick tip on how to increase the um, ability for your battery compartments in a razor to drain. Uh, basically what I have done is I've drilled additional holes in these battery boxes because the only ones that they give you is one here and one here. And believe it or not, that is just not enough for you to completely drain um, these battery compartments once you are washing or you get water in there, um, whatever may happen here. Additionally, I threw in some of these grommets that will lift the batteries up approximately a half of an inch off the bottom of these compartments as well to just allow that water to drain out much easier. Hey folks, thanks a lot for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a like and stay tuned because we have a lot more coming with this subwoofer install and we hope to see you there.